be easier to perform because what you're doing is everything's controlled and you have um you're more efficient because the boundaries are in place and all, all sort of things like that that we can talk about later so Absolutely. yeah um eleanor and sam sorry it's amanda from pb i'm just a floating voice in the background at the moment um just to let you know, we are live on Facebook now, so feel free to properly start the session. Best of luck, guys. Amazing. Thank, Thank you so much. Amanda. No worries, no problem. Thank you. Thank Amazing. you. Thank you everyone for your um, patience there while we um, set up the live stream. Um, so to kick off really, hi, it's Eleanor here from Professional Beauty. Um, today's webinar is with Sam Pierce, founder of PB Award winning The Potting Shed Spa in Batley and founder of mental health initiative Lois. This webinar is sponsored by online booking platform 11th Hour Beauty and they are offering 11 weeks free with no bank details and no contract required. We'll be popping more details in the comments for those watching on Zoom and Facebook so we'll pop those there for you to find out a little bit more. But for today, um, Sam's going to explain how to manage and protect your mental health when your salon reopens and we're going to um, show a little presentation as well and move on to a q a afterwards as well so if you have any questions for sam please do send any burning questions in but for now thank you so much sam for joining us it's an absolute pleasure um for the people that missed it just earlier on we pre-recorded this video to explain what happened to me last year and why i'm doing what i do and why i'm so passionate and a total anorak about it all so um i hope you enjoy it Brilliant, thank you, Sam. We're just going to get the presentation loaded now. So, we're just going to get that ready. You're doing an amazing job, Eleanor. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Had a couple of technical glitches. Sorry. <laughs> Fab. I think we should be ready to go now. So I'll go ahead and share the video. There we are. You should all be able to see my screen now, so I'll go ahead and play the video.
Helena and Sam, can you guys hear me? Yeah, there's no sound. Yeah, there's no sound, unfortunately, on the video. Um, and there's none coming through on Facebook. Can you guys hear the video okay? Or I can't hear anything at all. I didn't know who to speak to to try and tell them that we couldn't hear it. It's, it's absolutely vital that you hear this from the beginning. Yeah, who is sharing the video out of you two? Is it? No, so I'm sharing the video. Sorry, we tested yeah. yesterday and it was found sounded okay, but I'm not sure what's happened. <laughs> There's every all anyone's saying is there isn't any sound. Yeah. Eleanor, could you try um unsharing it we, and then resharing it again? I know it sounds really simple, yeah. but sometimes these things tend to work. So um Did you go. start it from the beginning, my angel, of as course. well? Sorry oh, yeah. about the issues. Again. I just tell every I just tell everybody it's we're just trying to fix the sound. Yeah, I've told everybody on Facebook and we're just sorting the sound out now. Sorry about this, guys. Um, and yeah, anybody who's watching on Zoom, we're just having a bit of technical difficulties, but hopefully we should be back on very soon. Okay, I'm just going to play the video again. Let me know if you can hear. Hmm. Um, Eleanor, I think if you go to your system, have you got any headphones in the computer or anything like that? Yeah, I'm wearing headphones. Yeah, I think, could you try taking the headphones out, please? Is that okay? Yeah. Just pulling them out of the computer, because I'm wondering if you're just hearing it through them. Um, so if you try playing again, sorry about this. Hi, everybody. My there name we go. <laughs> Yay! I'll let you guys crack on. Best of luck. Sorry about that, everybody. <laughs> I'll be on here if you need me for anything good. Um, two disclaimers. One. I am wearing cheery, cheery tomato and completely naked from the waist down. Uh, not true. Um, the other disclaimer is I have three sausage dogs and I've tried absolutely everything to be able to bribe them to keep them calm uh, and not bark. So if they do, I apologise. Um, there's absolutely nothing I can do. So how are we all doing? I mean silly question really and how do you really put it into a sentence how do you describe how you're feeling because it's this massive lack of control that we've all been forced to deal with so i'm just here today to talk a little bit about how you can actually bounce back from really horrendous sort of life-changing circumstances that are totally out of your control and speaking from experience I've worked in the beauty industry for over 21 years now I mean which is really hard considering I am actually 29 so uh, no not true I have worked in the beauty industry for 21 years which by my calculations is about 4,000 dog years so I believe I've earned my stripes I have experience both in the spa and the salon industry my business the potting shed spa i'm the founder of that and when i went into doing this i came in it <clears throat> at it from a really diff different angle from most i didn't have the generic standard beauty training um, i came in it as a, from a marketing point of view my background, I did a degree in fashion at Central St. Martins um, uh, and then went into fashion PR and kind of wanted to utilize who I was as a human being in a way of contributing something to society. And I recognized that what I was doing in the beauty industry was really impacting on people and making a difference in terms of how they changed when they left, whether it was a full spa day with all the whistles and bells or whether it was just a, you know, you say just a brow tint or something like that. But the impact in what we do is really, really powerful. And I was so excited about this and I was so fired up about it that I just went in all guns blazing and the potting shed did incredibly well in uh, June 2000. 19 ironically we won our 37th award which was a lot and that's all i'm going to say on that because the same month for me changed my life beyond all recognition and i want to talk about it i want to share it with you because <clears throat> that was my own personal pandemic being attacked 
by, a, well, kind of like a silent assassin, they weren't. And I promise I'll try really, really hard not to swear. Um, but my entire livelihood and my business and me as a person was attacked by a rogue employee. They um, worked for me for one day. And so the purpose of this and now where I am today, full circle, in and amongst this awful situation that we're all dealing with in the best way, the only way that we know how to, is if I can impart my knowledge and prove that really you can bounce back if you have the strength and the fight and the ambition to be able to change what you thought was going to be your life's path or anything like that. So really, this is all about communication. It's about finding a different way of looking at circumstances and making the most out of it. Because when you're so knee deep in something and so unbelievably exhausted by the pain that it brings and everything else, and you're not given a little book, here you go, this is something shit that's going to happen to you. And here's a manual that will allow you to be able to deal with it. That doesn't happen. So this is about hopefully providing some hope and some clarity in a really foggy, very confused situation that we're all faced with so my own personal pandemic last year happened and we will discuss briefly what happened because there's too much detail and it's too hard actually to be able to go into so much but really the whole point of this and the whole reason why I'm talking to you is so that you can believe me that when I say it was so hideous and so awful that you can go okay then maybe I'll take some of this advice and I can use it because of how I feel at the moment with how out of control I am so we had an incident last year and you know people will say to me well you've got a high profile you're known for what you do surely this is going to happen well no because the one thing that I've always had in my life is trust and I think to lose the trust is a really, really dangerous thing to have. And, and it's something that I felt very challenged by. I didn't want to never trust anybody again. And God, believe you me, it has tried and tested me. But moving forward, I'm really grateful for what happened because what it did was it made me stop and reevaluate what it is I was doing and why I was doing it. One of the things that I'm sure we can all agree with, the industry that we work in is all about this unconditional agreement that we will provide you with a service. And along with this service, we will also provide you with unconditional shoulder to cry on. We will provide you with um, solic unsolicited or solicited advice about how to deal with issues, problems. And this is an unspoken thing that we in our industry because we are in a caring I hate people that do that but i've done it now and again i can't stop we provide this service that also adds an unspoken level of care and compassion and advice and comfort that people expect us to be able to give and to provide relentlessly and continually and i just get kept giving and giving and giving and giving and giving and I was running on empty and you become really resentful and really angry that all you're doing is giving out and giving out and there's absolutely nothing coming back in and you are expected to be bulletproof to your team to your clients and 37 awards wasn't enough for me I wanted more and, and it wasn't about ego probably was that's such a load of rubbish I don't know why I was continually striving and when would that have ever been enough when would it have been enough at 10 to go well I've done that now so come on Sam let's look at you for a bit let's focus on you and why you matter because without you there isn't a potting shed there isn't the team that you have there isn't anything and, and I just kind of carried on regardless and the one person that paid the biggest price was me because I believe that everyone else deserved the best of me and there was nothing left 
for me as a person and for my a lot of my closest relationships and people get really fed up that you work really really unsociable hours and one of the things that I've learned through this exercise and talking to people within my industry is it's really lonely it's bloody lonely you are expected to perform I nearly did that again apologies dog barkage um you're expected to perform you're expected to be on you're expected to be infallible and actually we're all the same but because of the job that we've chosen and the role that we are performing and i always talk about that i'd say that we do what we do on a day-to-day -day basis is like theater we welcome people into this environment that we've created and we we act and we perform a role and one of the things that i soon realized during my time was that I actually didn't have the skills or the qualification to be able to safeguard myself from this stuff. And I call it OS, other people's shit. I didn't have the resources in place to be able to protect myself. And so layer upon layer of other people's stuff and other people's problems and this expectation was just wearing me down and grinding me down and I became really really resentful it took me to have some narcissistic psychopath come into my life for a really short period of time to make me stop and reevaluate what it was that I was doing the lights actually that's so weird I don't know if it happened on this recording but it went black that is just really odd Anyway, we're all going to start hugging, wearing sandals and socks and stuff. Sorry, that's just strange. It went completely dark, which is really profound because that's exactly what happened to me. And I was really poorly and in a very, very dark place and got the right help. But the one thing that I soon realised was that there wasn't any help. How on earth do you go from having a reputation and a 21 year career to saying hi hi everybody i'm drowning i hate everything my hate my life my everything has just become too much and i don't know where to go because i'm scared of the stigma and the association that mental health is you know the worst thing i was ever told was somebody said to me but you have a husband and you have a house and you have lovely dogs and I'm thinking, yeah, I know all that, but I can't cope and I can't manage this. And it didn't, wasn't just necessarily because of a horrendous incident that changed the course of my life. It was because my brain was broken and I didn't know who to talk to because that was opening myself up to be more vulnerable. So. What it led me to do was to be really vocal about the fact that I worry that our industry um, has these expectations without any specific training in place. There isn't anything that's available to us as a resource that you can get help and say, I'm, I'm in crisis, I need you to help me because I'm scared and I'm frightened and all these other things. So, so this is where Low Ears was born. Low ears, to me, is a symbol of hope. It's a symbol that represents that you are committed to your own self-care and mental health. I have been working with the amazing people at Premier Software, and what we're hoping to do is to integrate the low ears button into the salon software. It will also be available on an app. When you look at any salon software or any calendar or any diary, it's full of everybody else and not you, or perhaps a team member. It's about meeting targets. It's about missing a lunch break. It's about working eight days and just this relentless contribution and commitment to your own business and your work without making that promise to yourself that you matter and that you are important enough to be considered. So, this really resonated with me and with a lot of people since I've been talking about it. And I love the fact that people are really sort of empowered by the fact that they've been given permission to be able to look after themselves. So rather than being like Big Brother 
the low ears button will have the facility to be able to kind of monitor how you're feeling. And we've used the low ears because I sometimes feel that trying to explain to somebody how you're feeling in terms of where you are mentally can be really, really challenging and also very confusing. And sometimes the effort of the explanation is just too much. So what we want to do is be able to create a barometer. So talking about mental health and have something called your continuum, which is this level of how you're feeling during the day. And you can have highs and you can have lows, and that's perfectly normal. The worrying thing is, is when you're low for too long or you're high, <coughs> excuse me, for too long. So what we want to do is create a culture where it's okay to monitor how it is that you're feeling and that this isn't Big Brother, this isn't anybody checking up on you, this is actually somebody checking in on you and making sure that you're okay. So this facility will be able to monitor where your ears are and it kind of, you know, the efficacy studies that we've done and the way that we've looked at it, people are loved that this is like an unspoken code, you know, low ears today and it's kind of, okay, I get it, I'll just maybe give you a bit of a wide berth or we won't put Glenda with you because you know she's a bit tricky. So it's about controlling your environment and controlling how you perform and I'd see it very much as a safeguarding thing for business owners and for staff alike that there is this equal forum for everybody to kind of have a safe space where they can talk about how they're feeling or not. So I'm sure all of you are planning how to go back after this time we are getting conflicting information about when being open again is going to be a good idea. I think this is another thing that I'd just like to touch on briefly. Have confidence in making that decision based on your morals and how you want to run your business and how you want to be seen and perceived because however much you want to, you know, not pretend that this isn't a fact, people are really selfish and your care is very low down on the pecking order when they're wanting something from you. Um, I've just seen a big white feather, so that's lovely. I'm going all hippie, hippie again. But um, this time of reflection is all about, you know, adhering to the new legislations, the new laws and the rules that are going to be in place. For example, things like PPE. So we're looking at how we can safeguard our own health, which is absolutely vital, our physical health. Mental health is, has it of equal importance. So what steps do you have in place to ensure that whilst you're meeting the requirements, probably legal eventually requirements of how we go back into this new way of being, what considerations have you made for yourself? So this is about getting control back through a very challenging time, through a time of great fear and men mental stress. Um, don't underestimate how far you've come. I mean, my God, look, we're 50 odd days in and it's probably not going to make sense when this goes out, but we've done a lot of time. We've earned our stripes. You know, I know that we're all frightened and that's okay. But if you can just find that kind of personal pledge and agreement with yourself that you are enough and you matter enough to be able to take the steps to safeguard and to shout about this to your clients and to your staff that actually you come first. Your mental health is an absolute primary concern and that your team, their mental health is equally as important and that you create a very safe forum and that you have the systems in place that if somebody isn't okay, if somebody is in crisis, that you know that you can come and get the resources that you need. So the um, so low ears is part of an umbrella of universal health solutions, which is something that we are hoping to talk about a bit more in the future. But at the moment, it's really having incredibly talented people all under one roof. So ironically, the lockdown system that we're all adhering to at the moment is a traffic light system. And that's pretty much what low ears does. It provides you with a traffic light system of, you know, how you're doing. And obviously, red is crisis. I need help. I need help now. And that will be available to you. And then the other different colours, amber, I'm coasting, I'm okay. But, you know, I just want you to be aware and green. And there's no competition for anyone to stay in the green. It wouldn't be normal. Life throws huge curveballs at you. So really, this is about you having that confidence 
to know and to recognize that you matter enough for you to be able to make that pledge that you are going to contribute a big chunk of your working life to yourself and to your health and to that of your team and your clients and the end result is going to be whole, a wholeness <clears throat> it's that controlled approach to working rather than being all things to everybody and chaotic in your thinking that you are coming at it from a different angle because the first person in the queue is you and that's really vital so it's just been such a pleasure to talk to you all today and really cathartic for me to be able to open up about what I've been through and I hope that you can see that I'm not literally sitting upside down wearing, I don't know, something bizarre. I am here and I'm fighting for what I believe in. And I really hope that you'll join this movement towards a mentally healthier industry that we work in because this unconditional agreement that we all signed up to can be overwhelming. And this is about choice now. So make the right choices, be really brave. You know, it's okay to say no. It's okay to put 10 minutes in a diary to make sure that you'd have, you know, just a really basic thing. Being in the dark or being in an environment where you've created this wonderful ambience for clients, is really dangerous in terms of mental health because you're not getting vitamin D, it's a basic necessity. So get outside, look at the sun, for a bit, not the newspaper, the actual glowing thing, and put you first because it's okay and it's brave and admirable. Um, I'm really proud to be part of this industry, but I fear we're a little broken and I really want to be part of a new beginning where mental health isn't taboo and it's okay not to be okay. Um, happy to answer any questions. Um, and thanks so much. It's just been a pleasure. Thank you so much, Sam, for um, sharing that. And I think it's great that you're um, raising more awareness around mental health. And I wondered maybe, because we're going to move on to a Q&A now, um, what, what do you think are some kind of practical tips that people can make once we're back in work that we can help our mental health and our team as well? One of the things that I'm really passionate about is um, changing the language of how we sort of communicate with each other. So rather than saying to somebody, what's wrong with you, which can be, you know, it can kind of sound not, uh, you know, not aggressive or inquisitory, but to say, what do you need? So I'm a real, I really feel strongly about this. It's about changing a language of how we ask people how they are without sounding like we're being nosy or we are overstepping boundaries because I've always felt this in our industry that the boundaries often get very blurred. We become very over familiar with clients and sometimes you can't ever step back from that once that relationship shifts and alters. So I think if you change your language about communicating with your team and with your clients about how you are and I think really it's down to education it's education is critical um so i'm you know i'm really championing for a change and and really see hoping that people will make this commitment to their own well-being and that they will believe that you can't put a price on mental health you know people will think nothing of going to the gym and getting a gym membership but you know have you set out committing to a mental health gym, you know, a mind gym to ensure that you are regularly checking in on yourself. So I think it's about making adjustments. Another tip that um, really, really worked for us was creating a safe space that's away from clientele. And I know that generic salons and spas don't necessarily have the facilities, but if you can create an environment where you are private and you can have just time out of five minutes, I think that's sort of like a, like a chatty chair area or something like that, that allows you a private space to communicate or just to be peaceful because even the interaction of welcoming somebody in, and I know that everyone that works in the industry is struggling with this touchless society that we're now all working in. So it's about recognizing that just that energetic connection between another person takes it, takes it from you. So it's about finding protection methods and self-care methods that you all 
implement maybe first thing in the morning at the end of the day that you are committed to kind of protecting yourselves I've ra- I know I've rambled but it was just important I got that out there absolutely and no, I think that's a great answer and in terms of our supporting our teams as we go back if you're maybe noticing someone who's a little bit down what's a good way to kind of approach that topic and bring up I guess mental health in a kind of approachable way I think it's about having a really open forum that that judgment isn't a factor. One of the things that I've been doing, and I retrained last year, I'm a mental health first aid trainer. And this led me to create the low ears training, which is bespoke to our industry, which has the backing of BabTac, which is wonderful. But essentially it's mental health because a lot of the time it's confusing. And, you know, we all have mental health. It's whether it's it's bad or it's you know it's challenging and one of the things that I touched on is this level of continuum is you have your highs and your lows and during the day any normal person their continuum is up and down up and down when you're high it's called presenteeism so you're too on and there's a tendency around in our industry to be on all the time because it's pace and your targets and your you know timetable and running over and so it's this pace that everybody's working to so it's about creating a form of 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 acceptance that actually whatever you're saying won't be judged and that there is an open form of form of communication what I'm hoping low ears does is it's creating a new environment for people if they can't cope with it it is overwhelming that they can come to us and we can help them and kind of triage them because you can't put people into a box you can't you know I think unfortunately the systems in place that are known are incredibly long-winded and you can't put people into a tick box you have to deal with the person holistically it's a bespoke service it's a one-to-one service that I feel is absolutely essential so it's about creating an open forum but there's no judgment and that one of the facilities in the low ears is I've called it a moody board so I'm all into manifestation but people have mood boards because they're visualizing their car and what they want and everything like this. But the moody board is an opportunity to journal how it is that you're feeling. That's just your private thoughts that can't be accessed by anybody else. And sometimes I think if you can get it down and you can register how you're feeling, it's that unspoken agreement that, OK, I get it. You don't really want to talk about it, but I'm here if you do. That's great advice. And what are some kind of like maybe simple things that business owners or therapists can do if they're maybe at work and they feel very overwhelmed and, you know, you have to continue putting on a face to your client? Is there anything that's really simple that you can do to help in those instances? I think it's I think it's about time. One thing that I've I I think we're all recognizing now moving forward is that there's going to be longer time frames in between turnaround time for treatments. So whilst we're doing that to ensure that the safeguarding's in place as far as, you know, anti-back and all that kind of stuff that we're going to have to be doing, I think if there can be time factored in just to simple thing, after if you've done a physical hands-on massage that you go to the sink and you wash your hands all the way up to your elbows and you drain it off and it's just a way of cleansing from, because physical contact, whether it's as hands-on treatment, whether it's a verbal communication, if people are dumping on you continually. So it's about recognizing that your well-being is as important as the client's experience without compromising on anything. So it's about factoring in time. And I know that a lot of systems allow turnaround time, <clears throat> excuse me, for turning around towels and preparing rooms again for different treatments. But where's the person in there? You know, we're not robots. We don't work to that and I think that whilst this year has been incredibly challenging and I won't use the word unprecedented um, it's allowing us all to probably make the changes that we may not have had the confidence to do before and I'm really behind that so I hope I answered your question I can go off onto a tangent (laughs) no I think you did really well Um, and we've had a question from Mary and she's said um, would training centres, colleges and trainers be a good starting point for improving mental health in a learning environment? I guess like maybe introducing these practices would be really beneficial. What do you think? Oh, without question, because it has to start from the top. You learn by example. And if, if the people that are teaching and training 
a therapist how to be if, if mental health isn't considered when delivering a massage or delivering you know we talk a lot about managing expectations in the beauty industry um you know it's very powerful to be able to have that confidence that your service is you know offering something that is really beneficial to them on so many levels so you can you can be the most amazing technician in terms of how you perform a treatment but actually are you qualified in a sense that you're protecting yourself and you're not giving everything that you've got for the greater good of another person that really isn't considering anything about your journey so I think it's about being respectful to learning your craft but also having enough knowledge to be able to do it without paying too big a price I think that's essentially I feel very strongly about that a lot of people the, the average therapist shelf life apparently is about seven months because people are burnt out it's too much so that needs to change it's an amazingly rewarding career to be in it's I was going to swear then it's really hard and it's really you know but I think let's just be the change let's be really proactive about about ensuring that all the steps are in place in order for us to do our jobs properly absolutely I can see all the messages coming up on the thing and it's really hard to be not reading them and going like that <laughs> or, you know <sighs> amazing I think that's all we have time for now but thank you Sam so much for um for being with us today and sharing all of your advice. I think it's been really helpful for a lot of people at the moment. So thank you. Oh, I really, really hope so. And, you know, you're, you're all doing the most incredible job. I admire you enormously. And any questions you can reach out to, I hate people say reach out, I've done it again. Uh, you can contact me um, on Instagram or anywhere and I'm happy to answer any more questions after this. It will be my absolute pleasure. And just please take care of each other. And thank you so much for letting me share my story because it was nerve-wracking but I've got my big brave pants on today so thank you thank you, you so great, much Sam. thank you so much for everyone for joining us and we'll see you all again very soon bye <laughs> bye